Hello and welcome back underneath my bed. It's quite dusty down here, but we will make do. So today we're talking about this very channel. Um, I have some ideas, I have some plans, but they con they conflict. They conflict too much, and I need to talk about it. Get some people's thoughts on it. I'm not sure if I'm overthinking the whole thing, but that's a... Hey, I wouldn't be no thank you if I wasn't overthinking the whole thing. So, uh... uh I guess... Let's... Uh, here, I'm a good YouTuber, I know what to do. I, I set up something cool to happen. Oh wow, you're gonna hear about what happens next in my YouTube channel, and, and now I'm going to say, but first, let me talk about something else, and then you'll have to stick around to the end to catch the cool bit, don't worry, it's, it's all the cool bit, so, um, past two days I was just hanging out with little crazy bitch IRL, first time I've really met up with an IRL friend, only two times in recent memory, since Corona really, has been that time when I was hanging out with Young Sai and we streamed together a bit. Uh, and if you're a patron, we also made a video together. But you can only see that if you're a patron at the link in the description. Um, and uh, then yesterday, when I met up with Lil Crazy Bitch, uh, who you probably don't know. Um, kind of OG deep law type shit, deep law no thank you shit. Uh, he's in the video, The Odyssey, from way back, although his face is pixelated. I think that's about all he's been in. Oh, he was also in No Thank You Goes Outside. Uh, so yeah, we met up, got all fucked up, do what we gotta do. Uh, it was alright. It was pretty fun. But then, uh, he ended up getting tired really early. He ended up getting, like, sleepy at, like, midnight. And I was not tired at all. And so he went to bed. And I was just up. And I was, like, drunk and stoned and all fucked up. And I was like, oh, fuck. It's gonna be ages since I feel tired. Till I feel tired. So I went on the computer and I started just, I guess, I'll just watch some YouTube videos. But I ran out of YouTube videos in my subscription feed really quickly. There wasn't that many. Uh, and I was like, ah, no. No more YouTube videos to watch. And so as a last desperate attempt, I, I clicked on the home. Because I always use YouTube slash feed slash subscriptions. But I clicked on home just in case it would suggest me an interesting video to watch. Sometimes it does that. And in this, there in the, the middle of the suggested videos, recommended videos, was Horsecast Live, uh, which is a video on the Give and Take channel of what would go on to be the PCP, if it wasn't the PCP at that point, at BonyCon, doing a Q&A panel. I've already seen the video, but for some reason I decided to click on it. It's not even a very good video in my opinion. Um, but yeah, when I clicked on that, for some, that sort of just led me down a rabbit hole. Where I was like, I guess I'll just see if there's, uh, I, I, I think I was just like, maybe I'll just go rewatch some old Digi videos. I know I said I, in Denpa, I was like, I'm never going to talk about Digi again in a video, but this isn't a video, it's a podcast, so I'm allowed to talk about Digi. I'm pretty sure that's what it said. Uh, either way, it doesn't matter. This isn't really about Digi. It's all about me, the most important person. So either way, I was like, maybe maybe there's some old Digi. Uh, now that I've come to terms with my relationship with Digi, plus I'm too fucked up to really pay attention to anything, maybe if there's some old Digi videos I feel like we're watching, that would be the perfect time. And this is when the headache began, because I started drinking really early in the day, and I just suddenly stopped drinking, so I basically went through a full hangover while I was still awake. It was awful. Um, 
I, and I couldn't can't take any paracetamol or anything because I got alcohol in my system, so I was all headachey and fucked up, nauseous and shit. Don't drink. Drinking is not good for you. But yeah, and then I ended up. I I, I scrolled down right to the bottom, and then there was a. Basically, I ended up watching Digi Bros. I ended up on the the Vic and Hope channel, and I was like, oh fuck, yo, there's a this Kirby sixty four let's play. I never watched this one, so I watched the Kirby sixty four let's play. It was just like headachey and fucked up. Me just watching this Kirby sixty four let's play. I was like, this is you know, maybe I'm overthinking things on this channel too much. See, I told you I would segue into it. No thank you, Master of the Segway. Maybe I'm overthinking things on this channel too much. Maybe doing Denpa style big videos, Sacred Cow style videos like that, it's kind of missing the point. Back in the day, I used to do these simple little videos. I wouldn't even point the camera at my face. And people seem to really like those. Half the time being the pitch blackness. And people like that shit. But then eventually I just start trying to outdo myself and it got more and more complicated. Uh, but I also kind of like doing that as well. But I, I've been thinking like, my videos are just way too long. Like, you know, who the fuck wants to watch a four hour long video? Not me. Actually, I would, would definitely do that. But uh, four hours of just me talking. That's too much just me talking. Too much. Either way, I want to work on being able to say things more efficiently. So one of my ideas was to limit myself to not make any videos over 15 minutes. So if I'm talking about a subject, I have to fully get out my point within 15 minutes. Which doesn't sound too difficult, but even my s relatively simple videos end up being at least 20 minutes. I'm not, I don't think I'm, maybe, so this is the point, is to challenge myself to learn how to explain things succinctly. So maybe that's a good idea. So that way I can do, sort of, it will still be a challenge for myself. But it can also be the more sort of casual type of videos. It's more comfy. But on the other hand, I have an entirely different direction that I've also been thinking of going in. Which is to make some more actual high effort videos. And by that I mean uh, videos that would require a couple of days of work maybe. Or at least one full day of work. Probably more than that stuff that would require research and script and stuff or if you want to have an example of the sort of stuff something not exactly like it but the sort of thing I would be inspired by to make um, think of like and oh, you've probably not seen it so I'll just tell you where to find it if you go on YouTube you type in Druaga1 D-R-U-A-G-A 1 and then you go on his channel and you find his video about the Frogger modding community. Stuff like that. Something similar to that is what I'm kind of interested in doing. But uh, I'm not entirely sure if that's a good idea. And I'm also not sure I can justify it. Because if I was putting that much effort into a video. And it was getting my normal hundred or so views. I don't think I could justify it. Like, I can gladly justify getting a hunt, like, putting the, the exact amount of time it takes me to film and upload something if it's going to get a hundred views. But if I'm going to spend, like, a week on something and it's going to take that much time and then almost nobody's going to see it and I'm not going to get any sort of compensation for it or anything, kind of just feels like a waste of time. Kind of just feels like I could have been doing something more useful or not even useful, just, like, it won't be satisfying. If you put effort into something, you want it to be successful. But it probably won't be. And that's what's kind of worrying. 
But on the other hand, maybe that won't be the case. Maybe I'll still be satisfied with it, even if it gets very few views. I just don't know. Um, well, that was a long period of silence. I didn't mean to do that. Was that it? Did I make this whole podcast just to say that? Just to say that for ten minutes? Um. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just not really sure what I'm doing, really. I got like 12 different ideas and none of them are good. It's the same with my dissertation. (laughs) I was supposed to be going to, well not going, uni starts again tomorrow when I'm recording this. Um, I bet it's online because of Karanga, uh, and I don't, I, the class is at 10 a.m., it's 12, 12 midnight right now, 12.30, and I am skeptical, shall we say, if I'm gonna be awake at 10 a.m., very skeptical, and I, I didn't sleep much last night, so I don't think I want to sleep do that again. I think that would be very bad. Sounds like a terrible idea. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't think I'm gonna show up to that class. I think it's just the advanced music production, but I don't need help with music production. That's my strongest so literally, of any skill in the world, that's the one thing I can do. I mean, sure, it's not like I'm saying, oh, I'm smarter than all the teachers. But let's just put it this way. Last year, we had an art of production course. One of the modules was called art of production. I got a distinction in that module. I went to one class the whole year. And I got a, 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 like a 75, I think, or higher. 78, I think it might have been distinction and that's not me showing off i'm not being like look it's so easy haha i I can do it like nothing like it's just that that i i i know how to research independently i don't necessarily need a class to tell me how to do things i would much rather just experiment and do it myself and i'm also not bad at writing essays so i don't feel like i need it you know Um, I don't remember what I was about to say about that. No idea. Uh, <laughs> I don't no idea why I brought that up. Why did I bring that up? Oh yeah, so I'm supposed to be doing my dissertation this year, right? Um, and uh, yeah, so I have to come up with like an idea to do my dissertation on. I'm not going to say anything about it here because I have like three different ideas, none of which are that great, but all of which may work. That's basically the best I can hope for it right now, is uh, may work. <laughs> So that's fun. Um, yeah. Oh, I think that's. Damn, I'm getting through this stuff fast. I thought I would have more stuff to talk about. I was like, oh man, I've got so much to update people on. I should just do an under no thank yous bit. 
but it turns out I actually got it all out really quickly. Um, this is kind of underwhelming. Kinda underwhelming. Uh, this is a rubbish video. This is a rubbish podcast. Did I not have other things planned to talk about? I was gonna talk about some anime I've been watching, but none of them are actually that interesting. Uh, uh, in fact, I don't even know why I'm making this, because I kind of just want to go back to watching anime. I, 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 I guess it's just because I just started watching, like, I just watched, like, two two episodes of Strike Witches and then dropped it, and I was going to make, I was going to say something about how, like, Strike Witches has, like, everything you could possibly do to make an anime good. Like, it has battles, it has cute girls, it has cat, cat ears, they turn into cat ears, they can fly, and they're kind of like mechs, because they're kind of like planes, and no one, women in that universe don't wear trousers or pants, so there's loads of thighs, it's got, um, like, a Yuri, it's got Yuri in it, it's got military strategy, it's got aliens, it's got, uh, history, like, historical, World War II, nerd shit and yet despite having every single thing going for it it's complete trash it's complete shit it's not good at all I don't know how they managed to fuck it up well I'll tell you one thing they fucked up is the fucking animation this show that show looks like shit arguably one of the worst animated shows I've ever seen and the only reason I say that is because clearly they they were way too ambitious and it's not just the animators' faults. Firstly, it definitely would never be the animators' faults because I can tell you they probably were working very hard and it's all to do with, you know, they didn't even have, they either didn't have enough time or didn't have enough staff, right? But really the problem is the director, who should have known this, didn't compensate for their low staff slash time slash budget like a better show would have done by stylizing the visuals and simplifying it a bit. They just tried and failed to do full on like huge battle scenes and they end up falling back on janky CG, janky animation at like 4 FPS that it, it like has no f um, momentum to it. It doesn't, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like flying. But then also because they they have now I don't know if this changes later in the show I would assume it does, but the first big battle scene in the show takes place over an ocean, and all the shots are like looking up, and so, you know, in a good battle scene, especially if it's a kind of complex one on a big scale, it's very very important that your audience has a very good understanding of the environment, and is able to reference the environment at all times. This is why you'll see. Oftentimes, battle scenes in anime take place in cities, uh, and it'll be like, oh, we put up a barrier so we can go fight and no one can see us in this in city or whatever. That's a very common trope in battle anime, uh, because at least then, everyone roughly knows the layout of a city street, and like any random city street. Everyone knows how big an, a skyscraper is, roughly, so if someone's flying past skyscrapers, you can always tell exactly how, like, you can make a pretty good guess on how fast they're going. Uh, if they're like X high up, you can pretty much tell how high up on the street they are. But when, and it, so even that is a lazy way to do it. Even that is a lazy way to do it. If you want to see uh, that sort of stuff done well, uh, in anime I would say Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, and in cinema, uh, any Hong Kong action movie. Uh, they, they, they got that shit down in Hong Kong. Um, they know how to do fight scenes over there. Uh, but yeah. 
there is zero frame of reference for the fights because it's just a, an open ocean and open sky. So there is no you, there is no sense of of like how fast these characters are moving because time seems to speed up and slow down all the time as well. Uh, like like when it seems like uh, sometimes when it goes into the character's internal monologue, time slows down, but sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes. It seems time seems to slow down even when they're not in their internal monologue. Like distances seem to be changed, or maybe they're just suddenly traveling slower. It doesn't make any sense. The fight scene is fucking shit. It's it's god awful. The main character is annoying and overpowered, but like not in a cool way. In just a but we couldn't be bothered to write a character that goes through like development way. I don't know, they just fucked it up on every level. The art design is terrible, the backgrounds look like ass. Everything's terrible. They should have, like, all of these problems would be solved if it just had a bolder direction. Like, my favorite anime of all time has, like, a shitty budget with, like, no time to do anything, no stuff, you know, indie, not indie, I don't know why I said that. Sir Experiments Lane, right? And yet, by using very inventive art design, they actually make something that looks amazing, despite the fact that it's not got the highest budget or the most impressive animation, right? It's all to do with art design. And then my favorite anime director, Akiyuki Shinbo, he does that. He is the master at this. Like, he knows how to stretch your budget and fucking get these crazy shots. And he has this stylistic way of directing that gets the most bang for the buck even when using limited animation. And lots of other people know how to do it well as well. But clearly this director does not. I didn't mean to just go on a rant about Strike Witches. But I guess I just went on a rant about Strike Witches. Then I was going to watch Nanoha Vivid. But then I, I started watching it and I thought, I don't want to watch Nanoha Vivid right now. Let me watch Nanoha Vivid Strike instead. And then I started watching Nanoha Vivid Strike, which isn't even called Nanoha Vivid Strike. It's just called Vivid Strike because you don't technically need to have seen Nanoha to watch it. Oh no, the, so yeah, actually, so I started watching Vivid, and then I remember that I never finished Strikers, um, because it was shit. Me and, me and young Ethan had watched Nanoha Strikers together, I'd watched a bit of it, and it was just really terrible, even though I thought that was supposed to be when the show gets good after the first, because we, we both, I've watched the first movie before, I've watched the first season, I'd like, not all of it, but like a good chunk of the first season, I've watched the first movie, I've watched like a few episodes of A's and then dropped it. Then with Young Ethan, I re-watched the first movie and watched all of the second movie, which was really good. The second Nanoha movie is really good. Both of the, the first Nanoha movie is pretty good, the second Nanoha movie is really good. Um, and then we, we were like, time to watch Strikers, and it was just awful. <laughs> Which is quite typical for Nanoha. Uh, so I don't, so that's why I stopped watching it, because I was like, I don't know who any of these characters are. Um, so, so I was like, I'm gonna watch Vivid Strike, because I know you don't have to have watched Nanoha to get Vivid Strike, because it has, like, it's a spin off, basically. Also, Strikers is, to, is done by A1 Pictures, so it doesn't look very good. But it's fine. I'm not super on the A1 hate train. Like, I can, I can stand their art style. It looks better than Strike Witches, I'll tell you that much. Um, everything else in the Nano franchise is done by Seven Arcs. But yeah, I, I start, I, then I started watching Vivid Strike, and then for some reason, I was, I was just like, I went on my anime list, and I, I was just like looking at my plan to watch list, and I was just like, wasn't I planning to watch that one show about Shogi? Shogi? Um, you are no Oshigoto. Um, and so I just decided to watch that instead. Because I thought, well, I guess today I'm just watching things that I don't think are going to be very good. 
but it turns out that I'm actually quite not actually really enjoying Duo no Oshigoto. Um, it's actually pretty good. Also looks better than Strike Witches, but what doesn't? Um, and then, while I was watching that on Nine Anime, I happened to scroll down on Nine Anime, and the first thing in the recommendation was this anime. I've never heard of before called And You Thought There Is Never A Girl Online? question mark and the fucking the cover is just like we it's just a girl with like all her clothes ripped and I was like what the fuck is this? How have I never this is this seems like utter trash. Uh, so then I just decided to watch the first episode of that and that is also kinda hilarious. It's it's utter trash. It has it has no merit as anything other than like Pure wish fulfillment, because um, uh, netoge no yome wa onna no ko janai to omata omata. I there you go. That's the Japanese title. Netoge no yome wa onna no ko janai to omata to omata. What I say omata omata. I'm kind of tired. If you can't tell, I'm very tired actually. I didn't sleep much last night because we were out. Um, but yeah, it's just a otaku wish fulfillment. It's just like, what if a girl in a in a, a MMO asked you out, and you were like, okay, and then it turned out that there was a cute girl who goes to the same school as you, and she like is obsessed with you. It's just that. That's the entire show. Um, so I'm probably gonna drop it because it has no merit. But I'm kind of entertained by it, just watching. I'm I'm kind of curious to see if it will, like, how full trash it will go. I think I don't think it will have enough merit to carry me through all twelve episodes, but I might get some mild entertainment from it. Plus, I realized that when I was watching Digi Bros, I realized for some reason I only ever watched the Digi Bros series. If you don't know what Digi Bros is, it's Digi and their brother doing uh, basically Game Grumps. Um, and uh, yeah, for some reason they only ever watch the ones where they complete the game. But there's a bunch to where they just play like a part of a game and then drop it. I think that might be good. So I'm going to start watching those as well. Plus... I was reading this visual novel, which you'll know about if you've watched Denpa, called Chrono Clock. But Chrono Clock has this one character in it, who is supposed to be British, and the combination of how she's already a bad character, because, like, it's not Moe, like in, what's that one anime? Um, the one with Ayaya. I've seen that show, and, I, and that has a girl who's supposed has multiple girls who are supposed to be British, and yet, and they're clearly not. But it's not really a problem. What the fuck is that show called? Am I? What is that called? I should know this. Um, Kiniro Mosaic. Is that it? I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, yeah. That was just kind of moe, like the way that she couldn't really speak English that well. But it's the combination. It's really the translation that fucks it up in the, in this visual novel. Firstly, her character is not that, not as cool as that. Like, her character is way more like, I don't even know, she's just kind of annoying. But then the translation is so awful, the official translation. It's, for some, firstly, for some reason, they make they 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 make all the characters just say fuck all the time, uh, which is stupid. I don't like it when translations just overuse swearing for no reason. But secondly, and this is the worst one, is that they made that character. So that character's like, as part of her gimmick when she's speaking Japanese, she'll use a lot of loan words, right? And for some fucking reason, in the translation. They decided to replicate that by translating the loan words and writing them as like the domaji 
forms, basically, in Japanese. So you'll hear her say the loan word version of the the word, but then you'll read it, and it will be an English text, and then a Japanese word in the middle of it, and it's just so annoying because it's like hearing someone just speak in fucking like like proper weeb speak, like they used like they used to do back in the two thousands on a forum, you know. The the translation is so bad. Oh my god, it's just painful to read, and it's so distracting because you're you're constantly like, and also half of it's like there's too much localization. For example, at one point this English character, uh, she's basically like I don't remember exactly what she said in Japanese, but I can guarantee you it was not this because the translation says something like, uh, "I don't want to be the Mitchell to your web." Now, if you don't know, Mitchell and Webb is a comedy duo in the UK. Uh, you may know them because they made Peep Show, which is quite a popular TV show. Um, there is no fucking way that that was in the original game. I would I would have noticed if the voice actress said Mitchell and or Webu or whatever. I would have noticed that. I'm pr- I'm pretty sure. I don't remember exactly what she said, but I'm pretty sure she just like said something about Bokeh and Tsukomi. So the fact that they would translate it as that, it just reads as, like, some translator trying to prove that they know English cultural references, which is just fucking distracting. And add to that that the visual novel isn't really that interesting anyway. Like, the plot of the the, the VN isn't super interesting anyway. And, and it's just... I've, I've just sort of been putting it off and not really playing it. But then the... And then at the same time, I got back into playing Minecraft again. And so every time I would go on my computer and I'd be like, I want to do something that isn't YouTube anime or music or reading or whatever. I, I would I would be like, I want to play a video game. Well, I also been playing Sonic Adventure 1. So I would either just play Sonic Adventure, I mean replaying. I would either just play Sonic Adventure, or I would play Minecraft, and because it was yeah, so I'm just like now I just don't want to fucking read that shit, and so now I'm just probably gonna end up dropping it. And there was a whole saga where I had this old Windows PC. Um, I I found an old Windows PC. And I was going to use it to play visual novels on. But it basically just bricked. It like blue screened and just stopped working. And I I, I need to buy a Windows 7 disk. I don't know. I, the computer is too old to install Windows 7 from a USB drive. And um, so I need to buy a Windows 7 disk. And then I can play visual novels on that PC, I guess. Or on that like, Windows laptop. Is that really what I'm going to have to do? I don't know. Uh, Oh yeah, so back to Chrono Clock. Because I just want to cover this in case you're someone who's in the know and you're about to say this in the comments. So I'm not the only person that has a problem with the translation in Chrono Clock. It's so bad that there's actually a fan translation patch that, that fixes a lot of it. So, for example, it adds in on it removes all the swearing or a lot of it removes all the 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 stupid weeb speak, and it re-adds honorifics because uh, the this translation doesn't have honorifics, um, which is great. The problem is, I am not running it on Windows. I'm running it on my Mac using Wine, and the fan patch won't run in Wine. No matter what, I've tried multiple different techniques. I've tried every technique I know to get things to run in wine. And uh, it won't run in wine. So I can't play the fan translation patch. I uh, just want to put that out there. In case someone says, why don't you just play the fan translation patch? I tried. So I may just end up dropping that game. In which case, I want to play cross-channel next. 
I I need to check BMDB cross channel. Um, I want to play cross channel because it seems good. So that might be what I play next. Um, I'm not entirely sure. There's a lot of visual novels to play, and I they're really long. Visual novels are a really long thing to be into. Um, so yeah, <laughs> and I, I my my hype, my original hype for playing visual novels is kind of died down a bit. Like I'm no longer like, oh yeah, I want to be the visual novel guy. Now I'm like, yeah, I guess I could be that. But there's so many, and the pro basically the biggest problem is that um. I, that I have to run stuff on Wine, because like, a, a bunch of visual novels just don't run in Wine. For example, anything by, um, oh, I forgot the fucking studio, uh, one of the biggest, Denpasoft, is that what they're called? Um, the, the people who made, uh, a bunch of stuff, like, uh, um, Son of a Witch, <laughs> Son of a Witch. I'm pretty sure it's Denpasoft. No, Yuzusoft. Denpasoft is a, tra a, a localization group. Yuzusoft is the developer. Anything made by Yuzusoft won't run in Wine, and there's no fix for it. I've I've looked it up. I've I've been on down the rabbit holes of research. There is no fix for it. You can't make Yuzusoft games run in Wine, um, which includes Dracu Riot, which I wanted to play. You also can't make. Um, Fucking uh, and Nitro Plus games, I believe, run in wine. Uh, and Nitro Plus, I made uh, like Steins Gate, Chaos Head, that sort of thing. So, um, you can't run those in wine either. So, that's a big chunk of stuff you can't do. Um, and then sometimes random games just will choose not to work. But also, even if you do start playing a visual novel, well, that's like a 30 to 50 hour investment of just reading, which is quite an intensive task on the brain. So, even that, it's like, it's kind of hard to get going. It's not too hard, but it's kind of, it's tricky to get motivation sometimes. Well, this podcast just went off track. This is my standard conversation form. I just like, I had some points to make. I made the points. Now talk about weeb shit. Now just talk about weeb shit. So yeah, strike. Let's let's recap. Um, um, I forgot what I talked about. Oh yeah, the shogi show is good. Strike witches is bad. Dirty bros let's plays of Kirby sixty four was good. Kirby sixty four as a game is pretty good. Um. Digibro, as a person, Digibro new content bad. No thank you, good. But maybe not. Visual novels, hard. Podcasts, bad. Alcohol, bad. Music, good. Thank you for coming with me under my bed.